more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Yo, not by any stretch of the imagination am I punting on this season. You know why? Because I'm excited for the future. And the future being this Sunday against the New York Giants. Go ahead and take care of business there. Then you move on to the next season. The next season being the playoffs. Anything can happen in the playoffs, especially if you can dominate along the line of scrimmage. Now, that's something the Eagles haven't been doing, right? The Philadelphia Eagles have been struggling on both lines of scrimmage. If you ask me, on the offensive side of the ball, it's more from neglect. Neglecting running the ball, being what the Philadelphia Eagles should be. What is the, what is the identity of this team? Are we some type of spread passing team? I know we have Thin Diesel, Devontae Smith. We have A.J. Brown, two of the best doing it, two of the best or, or two of the top 10 wide receivers in all of the land. We have Dallas Goddard. We have old head Julio Jones out here making plays, guys behind him like Zacchaeus, Quez Watkins, well, Quez Watkins and these guys, right? But that shouldn't be our identity. This is Philadelphia, Jack. What are we doing here? It's a line of scrimmage city. It's a line of scrimmage area, right? All the way out here to South Jersey, baby. We're about to line of scrimmage. There's some line of scrimmage shit out here, baby. That's how we're doing it. But along the other side of the ball, what are we? Are we a bend but don't break style of area? Nah, not by any stretch of the imagination, right? But hey, you dealt the cards that you dealt, and that's probably what you are right now, right? A bend but don't break. You're playing multiple rookies on the back end. Uh, you got a second year playing Reed Blankenship, who looks like he's the linchpin on the back end. So it's a whole lot of inexperience there, albeit with guys like a Kevin Byatt, uh, with the James Bradbury. With a guy like Darius Slay, right, <laughs> right. So that, but, but a guy like Darius Slay points to something else to me. You know why? I think I played an amazing game this week, man. Because he is the type of guy that makes me question the leadership of this team. Who would think you would question the leadership of this team when you have a guy like that, right? Who would say, "I played an amazing game in a game where you lost to the damn Dallas Cowgirls." You lose to the Dallas Cowgirls, don't play good on defense, but he tries to point to his individual performance. And I think he was overrating that performance, to be honest with you. Think about that. Where's my man Jason Kelsey, BG Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, right? Lane Johnson. These are the guys who should be up in everyone's face in the locker room, even a cat like Kevin Byard who came and showed some natural leadership, albeit in a short truncated time period of being with the team. These guys should be the ones telling everybody, but hey, listen, we haven't been playing good ball, but the, but the playoffs is a whole different ball of wax. We can come out here, right? Limit the possession. Start running the ball, right? Coach, coach, coach Sirianni, right, who is to blame ultimately in my, in my estimation, he's micromanaging the offense. He's the passing guy. Coach Johnson, Coach Brian Johnson comes from a running background. He comes from Urban Meyer. He comes from Dan Mullen. Those are the people who shaped his ability to coach football because they coached him and he was on Coach Mullen's staff at various places. They're about line of scrimmage and running the ball. That's what Dan Mullen is about. He does great with quarterbacks, but different style of quarterbacks, but he establishes the line of scrimmage. That's on Coach Sirianni. I'm not a big Sirianni fan, to be honest with you there. He's my least favorite Philadelphia Eagles coach, if we're being real about the situation, right? But he nevertheless is a Philadelphia Eagles coach, so we ride or die. But, man, it looks like we're dying with this soft brand of football, which, which is why I want to talk about the future. So, right, as I await the All-22 that isn't out yet, I will continue to talk about something just so, you know what I'm saying, it's something that's been popping up on my mind there. I want to get back to playing aggressive defense. I want that style of defense that I come to love, right, that I first knew up under my man, Buddy Ryan. That was my guy when I was a little kid. That's the first coach that I remember. And him being the first coach, he spawns a couple of other guys who ended up being my favorite coach, one being Rex Ryan. That's like my all-time favorite coach next to Coach Reed. Coach Reed is my all-time favorite coach, but on the defensive side of the ball, unquestionably, is Rex Ryan. I love his style of ball, and if you can see, his style of ball right now is winning. 
Go look at the Baltimore Ravens. They set up from the Rex Ryan style of ball, getting those Rex Ryan disciples out there. Uh, Wink Martindale, right? We see him. We'll see him this weekend, actually, with the New York Giants. That aggressive brand of football, he's the third Ryan brother, right? Rex Ryan, Rob Ryan, Wink Martindale, the three Ryan brothers there. His guy, Mike McDonald, who was up under him, goes to Jim Harbaugh, right? John Harbaugh, the, the coach of the Baltimore Ravens, right? From a longtime Philadelphia Eagle. There's the connection there, of course, as well. The style of ball that they play out there, right? That's the hardest team in the league. They are that. They stay line of scrimmage sound. They stay running the ball. That's the hardest team in the league, right? I branded them that when I was covering that team. They stay on that shit. Whereas sometimes we veer off, right? And we can get a bit finesse like we are now. They don't do that. <laughs> I would like to go and get that man, that defensive coordinator that they have right there, right? In, in, in a perfect world, he would be the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's not going to happen. So the best thing you can do is get the guy that's an offshoot of him. They went back to the well at Michigan because the Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, he was there with the Baltimore Ravens all that time. And Michigan had brought him in. He did work there. They brought him back to the Ravens as the defensive coordinator instead of a defensive assistant. Now you have the same deal right now at Michigan. Jesse Minter, Coach Minter. That man right there is doing a the one-two thing. If you saw Michigan versus Alabama, those schemes are right out of the Rex Ryan handbook there. Absolutely killing it. Go get him next year. I don't want to see this Vic Fangio shit no more ever again. Bend but don't break. That's not this area. We don't bend. We don't bend. And we'd rather break than the bend. Put it that way, right? We're going to go balls to the wall, pause, and we're going to go and get after it. You get a guy like that to bring that type of system here. If you can't get him, you know what I'm saying? Listen, first and foremost, you got to get Rex Ryan. If he wants to coach, that's perfect. He is Philly, right? You get that guy like that, man. You bring him the originator of that style of defense, right? One of the originators there. You bring him there. But if he doesn't want to coach, man, you can go and get that, get that mentor guy, and it'll be all to the good. Matter of fact, check this out. What I like about that mentor scheme is it's is definitely a ton of man. I mean, at least 90% of the time, it feels like they're in man coverage. But even when they're, even when they're off and they have to guard the sticks, uh, they will take care of the most imminent threat. So you'll see that man coverage right here. Man coverage here. You get man coverage here. My man's going to sit at the sticks here. He's already on it on the line of scrimmage, right? This right here, he's trying to keep it in front of him, right? This could obviously, right, you could go deep on the outside. You go deep anywhere, right? But on the, outs on the outside, it's a little bit easier to go deep for you without having to worry about a man in the middle of the field if you can manipulate it like that. But always, always pressuring with a slant, uh, always doing your stunts and your raps, sending extra guys off the second level and everything like that. So that's what you get right here. Uh, I believe uh, you get you get a loop, right? Almost looks like a green dog. Actually, it would be more like this. My man is coming from here. Looping around there, uh, you get him coming, sliding on the inside as well there. Uh, so they're doing some stuff on the inside, just really confusing my man last night, Jalen Milrow. <laughs> he had nowhere to go with the ball but the crumble. Actually, the, the stuff happens fast, right? Especially if you're on like a second and 18, what they know right now. The spacing is absolutely perfect. Let's actually see what happened right here. Yeah, you see them, right? He's looping, right? He becomes the point of attack guy right here. My man comes from the other side right there. The him and the nail situation there. Uh, top a couple of blockers. Uh, you get that edge pressure bowing in, making sure that he stays on the inside right there. That's that's great discipline. That's sending chaos, but send it, sending it in a disciplined manner, if you get what I'm saying there. Um, this is definitely the type of football we need to play in Philadelphia. Same deal right here. Organized chaos. You can see the line slanting here just to allow a second level sin. It is absolutely beautiful. Quick pressure there. And, of course, you see these guys playing it, right? They are with the stand your ground laws here. Nobody's backing off, scared, and all this. Bend but don't break shit. They're playing it. They're, look at that. Oh, my God. I couldn't even look up and see what the shell was doing uh, because the pressure was coming so fast, right? But you can see the angle that the line takes when they get off here. You can see everybody shifting this way. This allows for this man right here to come because he's going to get a one-on-one -on -one outside here. 
It seems pretty simple to me, especially if you talk about having fast athletic linebackers like they have right there. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind the Eagles drafting Michael Barrett, <laughs> right? He would be off the chain as an Eagle, super fast guy, was a quarterback. When I, when I knew him uh, back in the state of Georgia there, he can run. Definitely right up our ollie right here. You get a couple of down linemen, right? You get multiple edge players throughout, and you just let these guys hunt. You get a, a, a wrap around here. Uh, you get a spy coming around here as well on someone like Jalen Milrow who can absolutely run. Uh, you get multiple stunts there. Just like I said before, organized chaos. Rex Ryan, that's his deal right there. Look at that, how quick the action happens. Milrow with an exit plan is left with exit booms. Look at that right there. And the spy was on him, if anything. You can see the spy here. Right, just, just knowing exactly what to do with your personnel, which, which doesn't seem like the Eagles know what to do with their personnel there and identifying guys. Look at the back end there. Look, man coverage, right? Somebody asked me something about an adjustment on one of the plays that had happened before, I think in the Giants game against Slayton. And I told him that the call would be cat, cat coverage, right? It would be cat coverage, meaning you got that cat right there. Man coverage. That's what the adjustment would be, right? I've been a part of stuff like that. You just be like, hey, you got him, I got him, let's roll. Everything else happens, what happens on the front end there, on the back end, we're in man coverage. That's the adjustment out of this blitz. Now, as you can see right here, man coverage, man coverage. You'll see when it takes shape there, right? You're just taking away the quick game stuff. And now look at him. Now the pressure's starting to fold. Milrow is already looking around for an exit plan, and the play pretty much just started. But nobody's open. Why? Because everybody's on is a hat on a hat. Is a man on a man there. Just need to be more aggressive, right? Doesn't necessarily have to be these guys, right? Because there's a lot more people in the NFL who will run something like this. But you have to let me know. My number one choice would be Rex Ryan at 61 years old. He is the same age as John Harbaugh. So I don't want to hear that he's too old stuff. You can't be too old and people are running your stuff. So Rex Ryan, I, I don't believe he'll ever be a head coach again. So he would, could possibly be a long-term answer at the defensive coordinator spot, at least over the next handful of years, right? Uh, somebody like a mentor, if he's balling out, same deal with Sean Desai. If Desai had a good year this year, more than likely he was going to be a head coach next year. He was thought of as one of these young genius types on the defensive side of the ball. I hate to see what happened to his career because he's now been pushed back. You get your play calling duty stripped to you, right, for somebody like Matt Patricia or just in general there, your career undoubtedly has hit a snag. So a cat like Mentor, same deal. If he comes and balls out, he's probably you're probably replacing him after a year as well. So that's the only problem and drawback with those young guys like that. Now somebody like Mike McDonald. I can't see Coach Sirianni being fired after this year. I mean, he just went to the Super Bowl, right? Although you could say Coach Peterson got hosed eventually pretty quickly as well from winning an actual Super Bowl uh, to being in the unemployment line. And we can see Coach Peterson can coach, man. He's doing a good deal with the Jaguars. He'll make at least the offense his. Coach Sirianni, not so much there. So I don't see him getting replaced, but if they did, a cat like Mike McDonald would be hard. Or if you wanted to do it like I would do it, all right, if you got a big franchise quarterback like that, you have to go and get an actual office of genius, not somebody posing as one, one who would call their own plays and do that. And sh <laughs> why not reach again at the for the Baltimore Ravens, who's, right, they've had a resurgence on offense under your man Todd Munkin, back-to-back -back national championship winning offensive coordinator, hired by the Baltimore Ravens, obviously doing big-time things with those guys on offense. My man Lamar Action Jackson destroying it, about to be league MVP again under his guidance. That would be an excellent choice as well as a head coach there, but not pushing Coach Sirianni out the door. I think it's too early for that. But you get what I'm saying there. I'm mostly talking about the defensive coordinator spot. I don't want to see Matt Patricia there. His defenses look terrible when he was a Detroit Lion away from Coach Belichick. Coach Belichick still coaching good defense in New England. That man's not coaching good defense here in Philly and definitely wasn't coaching good defense in Detroit. And he had a stint back in New England with, as an offensive coordinator where he struggled as well there. So I'm not sure why he's – why he's making people a believer because they know his name, I'm guessing, but I guess they forgot the Detroit Lions tenure, right? 
All right, let me know, though, all right? Not punting on this season. Can't wait for this game. Come up, win that game right there. Then it's a new season. Run the ball. Play sound line of scrimmage defense. Stop the run. And we go from there. We advance in the playoffs. We do the one-two thing, baby. Get that Super Bowl, baby, and we out. Your boy, Jersey Murph. Shout-outs to everybody out in Jersey, period. Shout-outs to all my people in North Jersey, right? People, we want me to shout-out North Jersey. Uh, Shout-outs to Union. Union City, we was out that bad boy a few weeks ago. Big shout-outs to Sea Caucus, New Brunswick, Trenton. Listen, back here, baby, shout-outs to Laundell. Shout-outs to Millville, Bridgeton, Violence. Shout-outs to, of course, Glassboro, baby. Big love to Glassboro. Shout-outs to Camden. Shout-outs to Salem County. Shout-outs to Atlantic County. And shout-outs to my beloved Atlantic City as well, all right? Shout-outs to the entire Philly, Delaware, Elton, Maryland. Let's go. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.